let's take you outside in the grill, Jamaica. What's beautiful here, in fact, the Caribbean is, is really nice right now. <laughs> I mean, there's not much in the way of clouds. There's not much, any thunderstorms could change as we head into the latter half of next week. All right, joining us right now for the first report of the season. And unfortunately, you're going to see this face a little more as we continue to go through the summer. It is our hurricane expert, Alex De Silva. And Alex, uh, May, you don't think of a development in the tropics during the month of May, but it does happen. And there are some areas that we concentrate on it, that if you're going to get development, you're going to see it in these areas. Yeah, on average, we typically get a storm once every two or three years during the month of May. And where do we typically look during the month of May? Usually a little bit closer to home. We usually don't look out towards Africa. A little bit closer to home, we look in the Western Caribbean, maybe in the southern, um, southeastern um, Gulf, of, uh, Gulf of America, and off the southwest coast of, the, um, of Florida there uh, for that development to occur. Um, and, and then, you know, and then it usually moves to the north and to the east during the month of May. So right now, where the area that we're we're going to be tracking it's going to be in the southwestern Caribbean here at the end of next week towards the middle of the month that's where we're really going to be watching for development yeah we had mentioned this that it does happen in May and you and I were both looking at this this was compiled by uh, Jesse Farrell and when you take a look at the years we've had several years in in you know from 2014 to 2020 uh, it looks as though the last time if I'm reading this right is 2011 so we've not have 2021, I should say. We haven't had a May system since 2021. So the law of averages says, Alex, we're due. Yeah, and certainly we've been we've been really uh, you know claiming that this is could be the potential here ever since we released our forecast in March, really saying that there would be the potential for early season or even preseason development. This would fall into the latter category. The water temperature is very warm in the Western Caribbean and in, and in the Gulf as well. So conditions are there for the potential for some development. But it's a little different this time of the year, as you mentioned. We're not tracking tropical waves that you can see days in advance. If it happens, it's homegrown development due to the interaction between the jet stream and the tropics. Yeah, essentially what you get is you either get a big dip in the jet stream yep. coming south or you get an old decaying frontal boundary that comes down into the Gulf or off the southeast coast, stalls, and then you get a little bit of area of spin there. So in this case, we're watching for a dip in the jet stream to come down across the southeast in the middle of the month, and then it can kind of activate what we call the gyre. And we call this the Central American gyre. It's down in Central America. That dip in the jet stream kind of initializes some spin and we expect that to happen. So we're expecting, there's pretty high confidence, in fact, that we're expecting an area of showers and thunderstorms to really start to get going in Central America. Then the question is, is anything able to form off of this big, broad area of low pressure? Well, at the very least, there, right now there's not much of anything, but we do expect the tropical downpours here uh, from Cuba towards Central America. And it was, the decision was made yesterday, Alex, to start to highlight this area. Yeah, again, this is something we watch throughout the tropical season, especially early and late in the season, this gyre to form. Now, it's a broad area of low pressure, but if something forms, it could, it could pop in the eastern Pacific or it could happen in the southwestern uh, Caribbean here. So it could happen in either basin. And again, the time frame we're looking at this would be May 15th through the 22nd right now, highlighting a low chance of development. Yeah, so for those that forget what days we are, like me, that's late next week or over the upcoming weekend. Of course, the question is, Alex, impacts on the United States. Yeah, that's the big question everyone yeah. wants to know, and I think the chances are very little, near zero at the current time. If anything develops down there, it's likely to either go west into the eastern Pacific or move northeast over uh, Cuba and Jamaica and then probably out to sea. So right now, it looks like any threat to the U.S. is very, very low at this time. And by the way, for Texas, we've never had a landfalling storm during the month of May, Alex? Yeah, that is correct. Never a landfalling storm. And a lot of that actually has to do with that dip in the jet stream yeah. we, talked, we talk about. May, we still get those dips in the jet stream. So it's really hard to get a storm to move that far west. Normally, if we get a storm into the eastern Gulf, it's turning towards Florida. All right. AccuWeather lead hurricane expert Alex De Silva. Alex, thanks for joining us here on AccuWeather Early.